So far when talking about the theory of the firm, and for that matter the theory of the consumer, we've been discussing only the case of perfect competition. A synonym for perfect competition is just competition. And as we said before, it means price-taking behavior, which means that competitive firms don't compete in the average everyday meaning of the word compete. An example of perfectly competitive firms are small farmers producing a homogeneous crop, for example, corn farmers in the U.S. Midwest or the Great Plains. They are not competing against each other in the way we usually use that word, but they're an example of perfect competition because they take the price of corn as given. We now need to discuss other kinds of market structures. And they are described in this table according to two different characteristics. The columns are headed homogeneous and differentiated and that refers to what kind of commodity the different firms produce. Homogeneous means that the output of the firms are identical. So consumers don't care which firm they buy from. For example, uh, wheat farmers. Well, there are different kinds of wheat, but if you're growing red winter wheat number one, then uh, that's the same as anybody else's red winter wheat number one, and no consumer cares whether they buy it from you or buy it from somebody else. So a homogeneous commodity is one that is produced in exactly, has exactly the same qualities regardless of, of who produces it. A differentiated commodity, which is the heading of the other column in this screen, differentiated commodity doesn't have the characteristic. People do care about who produces it. For example, toothpaste. Not all toothpastes are the same. In fact, the companies are trying to convince you that their toothpaste is better than anybody else's toothpaste. In other words, that all the toothpastes are different. So in a differentiated commodity, consumers do care from whom they buy the commodity because it, it's, it's a different commodity. The, the rows are labeled many, few, and one, and that concerns the number of firms. So perfect competition, we assume there are many firms so that each firm assumes that its behavior doesn't affect the price of its output, or for that matter, the price of its inputs. Let's talk about some of these other market structures. I'll save the, the upper right one to the end. The second row labeled a few firms is called oligopoly from the Greek meaning many sellers. A homogeneous oligopoly is an industry that has only a few firms but they all produce more or less the same kind of thing. I shouldn't say more or less. They all produce a commodity which as in the eyes of the consumers are exactly the same. For example companies producing aluminum, or producing glass, or producing copper. Now there are clearly different grades of aluminum, and glass, and copper, but the industries have standards, and if there are only a few big copper producers in the world, if you're buying 99.99% .99 pure copper, it doesn't matter where it comes from, it's, 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 it's all the same, it's a homogeneous commodity. So Industries like that, uh, uh, glass is another example, aluminum, so I'll have to write that down, uh, aluminum, glass. You only have a few firms, but they're producing a homogeneous commodity. A differentiated commodity are very commonly found in consumer products, uh, cars, soft drinks. Many consumer products have brand names 
and it's 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 uh, very common with differentiated oligopolies that you have brand names. For perfect competition, of course, there's no point in having a brand name. Nobody, no firms have brand names, but in differentiated oligopolies, they certainly do. Uh, it's differentiated because the cars from one company are not the same as the cars from another company, or the soft drinks from one company are, are not the same as the soft drink from another company. And it's an oligopoly because there are not many producers of automobiles or many producers of soft drinks. There are only a few. Now, the technical distinction between what is many and what is a few is not easy to draw. And U.S. antitrust law makes it illegal to have only a few of firms in the industry, but it's legal to have many. So there are lots of lawsuits that are that are uh, where, where the main point of contention is one side says that you have a few and the other side says you have a lot of firms. The industry would be arguing there are a lot of firms in this industry and so they don't violate the U.S. antitrust laws and the government prosecutors would be saying no there are only a few firms in the industry so they do violate the antitrust laws. So there's no hard and fast rule distinguishing many from a few. It's a very s a subtle thing which has to be analyzed on a case-by-case -case basis and then judgment has to be used. But certainly I would say if you have only two firms in an industry then it's it's not many firms. It's an oligopoly. We even we even use the term duopoly. That's not a term I expect you to know, but duopoly means just two sellers. Uh, the last row is the case of a monopoly. If you have a monopoly, you don't really distinguish homogeneous from differentiated because you just have one guy producing this stuff. The only confusing entry in this table is the one I haven't talked about yet. It's this from the monopolistic competition one. And what's confusing about it is only it's a name. The idea is pretty straightforward. You have a differentiated product that's sold by many firms. A classic example would be gasoline stations. Now, not because they're selling different kinds of gasoline. Um, of course, brands try to argue that their brand of gasoline is different from somebody else's brand of gasoline, and th that might be true. But let's forget about that. Let's assume that all gasoline is the same. So that oil companies, that is the people who s who produce the gasoline, would would be a homogeneous, selling a homogeneous product. But a gasoline station is not simply selling gasoline. It's selling gasoline at a particular geographical location. And that's gasoline delivered at the corner of of uh, 4th South and 13th East in Salt Lake City is not the same as gasoline delivered at the corner of 4th South and 7th East in Salt Lake City. Even if the gasoline itself is physically and chemically the same because the location is different. And the economic test for whether whether two things are the same commodity or a different commodity is fairly simple. Would any consumer be willing to pay a different amount for those two? And the answer in this case of the gasoline stations is yes, because some people live closer to one gas station than the other, and so it's more convenient for them, and they probably would be willing to pay, let's say, one penny per gallon of gasoline more to get gasoline in a place that's more convenient than less convenient. Maybe they'd be willing to pay even more than that. So these are different commodities. The gasoline sold in different geographical locations are different commodities because some consumers would be willing to pay a higher price for one of them than for the other. So the example of gasoline stations is an example of a differentiated commodity, but clearly there are many gasoline stations in most metropolitan areas, and so it's not an oligopoly, it's uh, many firms. For historical reasons, we call this situation monopolistic competition. It's confusing because it's not monopolistic and it's not competition. It's not monopolistic because monopoly is down here and monopolistic competition is up here. And it's not competition because competition, the word competition is a synonym for perfect competition, which is here, and that's not the same as monopolistic competition. So it's a confusing term, but for historical reasons, we're stuck with it. 
we are going to study pretty soon monopoly. And so the two cases that we'll study during the course of this term are perfect competition, which we've already studied a lot of, and monopoly. Oligopoly is really interesting. It's where lots of current research in the last few decades in economics has taken place. When you have an oligopolistic situation, then firms need to use strategy to try to figure out what the other firms are going to do and how other firms are going to react to their behavior because the firms are interdependent. Each one of them knows that its behavior is, is going to affect the price and therefore indirectly affect the other firms, which can then uh, retaliate or cooperate. So there's very rich space of strategies which need to be analyzed in order to study how firms in an oligopoly behave. The standard tool that economists use is called game theory to analyze these kind of strategic interactions. So it's a fascinating uh, field, but we don't have time this uh, semester to, to talk about it. So we won't be doing anything with oligopoly anymore, just um, perfect competition and monopoly. We won't do monopolistic competition either, just perfect competition. Monopoly.